All right, well, welcome to the Gear Garage. My name is Zach, and this is my silly little show about whitewater stuff. And I'm here with Matt Cronin, the founder of Cronin Inflatables. Thanks for and having me. Yeah, yeah. And what we want to talk about a little bit is your boat, kind of your story. So right. first of all, this is your kayak in front of us. Tell us about the boat. What makes it special? So uh, I think lots of things make it special, and we're still kind of figuring out what all of those different things are. Um, like for instance, today you saw me like walking through the rapid and I was kind of leaning on the back of the boat and yeah. it gave, it gives you like a third point of contact. Um, what do you mean by third point of contact? So like when you're walking through a rapid, everything's slippery, mm -hmm. you know, like if you slip with one foot, they could throw your whole body off balance and then yeah. you fall. And so with the boat, it gives you a bracing point so that if one foot slips, you still have two points of contact that are keeping you stable. While you're in the boat? No, while you're walking... Like when while we were, like when we, while we were portaging. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. Um, other things that that uh, I like about it is it's it's super wide all the way to the end. Um, I uh, I got into creature crafting after rafting for several years. Really like creature crafting, tons and tons of fun. Um, and then I was kind of like looking to do my own thing, and and you know when the <laughs> the, the first year I started the business was what, what year was that uh so i i started working on a prototype i got the first prototypes in in like october of 2016. Okay. um i started the business last year 2017 um went and uh went to the um manufacturer that's building them for me um brought a couple back i didn't even get the shipment until like july of last year so like They've only been in the country for, you know, several months, not even a year yet. Um, but uh, anyway, so one of the things that, that happened since I started creature crafting is uh, down in California, all the water went away. Mm -hmm. You know, so this was going on in 2016 when we're in, you know, like one of the worst drought years ever. And I was like, I need to boat more than, you know, like two weekends a year. So I, I took the idea of the creature craft and just made it as small as possible. Um, that's kind of the idea behind this boat. So this is a response to low water in California. Exactly. You know, like I wanted to get out there more, mm -hmm. but I also um, wanted to be able to do more. You know, I'd be able yeah. to push myself more, something that's, you know, like a little bit more capable than other boats that mm -hmm. I had been in before. You know, like all of my uh, inflatable kayak experience was on the South Fork American. Mm -hmm. It's a class three, um, right outside Sacramento. And I had, after like the first year I swam like all but one of the class three rapids. In a regular inflatable in kayak. A, in a regular yeah. inflatable kayak. And, um, and then after doing that for like three or four years, once a year, it's not like I took a lot of time and got good at it or anything. But, um, the last year that I did that, I was like a 50, 50 success rate. Um, and I wanted to improve that, you know, like I wanted, I wanted something that I could run class three and like not even worry that I was going to swim, yeah. you know, like I wanted to know that I could just go and do that. Then I could go do class four. I could do harder stuff, bigger drops. Um, if you notice the, the rocker on the end of the boat, um, is uh, very similar to a G2 creature craft. Um, the G2 creature craft comes kind of straight up in the front mm -hmm. and I, I don't know anything when you say G2 I don't know I just yeah know, so that I know creature crafts have a lot of rocks so the, the G2 is the generation 2 creature craft okay. it's um, one of the main boats out there there's generation 2s and there's generation 4s the generation 2s are the ones that look more like this the yeah. generation 4s are the ones that have like a big thwart in the front okay. which give you like a pivot point for rolling okay um, and I knew that I didn't want you know like so much rocker in and they also um, kind of stick out on the corners, mm -hmm. you know, like by design, yeah, yeah. so that it helps with the rolling. Um, so I, I just shrunk it down, I pushed it out, um, I pulled the corners in just like a tiny bit, you know, like, you know, just to get them so that they're in a little bit. Um, I had to, you know, like design my own floor and... So you started with a creature craft kind of design, like the Just the idea of it. And then did you hand draw it? Did you get on a computer? So I tried that. I tried hand drawing it out and I started talking to a, a couple of the US manufacturers and like no one could figure out what I was talking about. Like they just didn't get it at all. Yeah. Um, so what I did is I went and bought Sonitube, which is like super dense concrete um, forms for like pouring piers under mm -hmm. your house. 
So it's just like a tubular piece of cardboard that's like super thick, yeah. hard cardboard. And uh, I had to cut my own forms. Like I had to use, because wow. you know, like, because you have to cut it at a, at a 45 degree angle in the corners here, right? Mm -hmm. So on top of, you know, like, this isn't, th this is 12 inches, but this is, you know, like 16 inches. And the only wait the bow is thicker than no 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 thing. just just because it's a, a because longer it's a because it's yeah, diagonal yeah, okay. you know like it's it's here yeah and not like this this diameter here is sixteen inches I I, I don't know exactly what it this is it's just bigger it's yeah. more so um, when when I went to start cutting that because you know you can't just like just like yes and like yeah just start sawing so I had to uh, create my own jigs basically so I like cut. A 45 degree cut in two different pieces of two by fours mm -hmm. um, and then I you know like used a straight metal object to align them mm -hmm. so that they were far enough apart that I could put the tube in and still cut at a certain angle so I, I built this you know one of these boats completely out of cardboard and gorilla tape to scale to scale okay. yeah yeah it's cardboard and gorilla tape and uh, and then I was able to take pictures of it, and then I show it to people, and and then they're like, "Oh, people here like, in the U.S. like U.S. manufacturers." Yeah, yeah. There, I, I talked to two. Uh, well, one one was based here, mm -hmm. um, but they imported. Uh, okay. But there was like actual staff that like did all of the design work here. Wait, this is interesting to me. So you boated on the South Fork. You want a boat more. You want a better boat. You weren't happy with the designs. You're like, I don't like these designs. I have a better idea based on creature crafting. Right. So. Like, Hey, manufacturers, will you make me this thing that I know is better? Right. That's where we're at. Right. And what they say? Uh, so the one U.S. manufacturer that I talked to um, was just out of my price range. I just I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, the other one was an importer, and I talked to them, got them to agree to it, um, and they said, you'll have to buy like 10 of them. But then as soon as they realized that I was trying to like start my own business uh -huh. and be more competition... Then they're like, I don't have time for so that. So you were at that point, when you came up with the design, you were going to have your own business. Oh, yeah. No, I knew I was okay. like, that was the intent. From you the knew beginning. you had a good design and you're like, I want to make one. Yeah, before before it was even made, just, you know, like just based on what little knowledge I had mm -hmm. of Whitewater and just like how well the creature craft performed, mm -hmm. I knew that there was more to it than just the one design. Yeah. Like I knew it could be adapted to other things. Okay. Um, so... You know, like basically I wanted the front as wide as possible. Um, I wanted, I knew that I wanted to sit low in the boat. Mm -hmm. You know, like most IKs that I, that I had been yeah. in, um, you sit, you know, like maybe at the halfway point. We're both bigger guys too. So when you're a big guy sitting up, it flips pretty easy. Right. Where like we want to, we both want to be lower because we're bigger. And for me commercially, when I have commercial guests, I want them sitting low too because it's really stable. Or you, it's less hassle for you to, you don't have to wrangle as many people. There's less swimmers and... Yeah, you know, well, there's less likely to flip. You right. know, like a lot of, of kayak manufacturers, inflatable kayak manufacturers, they just give like the private boater boat to outfitters. Right. But that doesn't work because people flip a lot. Right. Like we want our guests to be sitting low down in the boat. So right. So like this is a good size for that. Yeah, and uh, it's... It, it, it bridges like a huge gap from what uh, what was possible. And I mean, you know, like there's there's people that are such good eye cares, way better than me. And they do amazing things with other boats. And, but that's just not the norm. They're like yeah. professional or semi-professional kayakers that also jump in an inflatable kayak sometimes. Yeah. And like, I can't compete with that. You know, yeah. like that's not me. Like I want to get out there and have fun. Mm -hmm. And you know, like this lets me just have fun. Like I just have a blast, you know, and the stability, you know, like just everything. The first thing I tell people when, when they get in it and, you know, like, especially if they're like a little bit nervous about it, I, I sit them in it, flat water put in and I say, throw the boat over, like flip it over. Mm -hmm. And every single time I haven't had anyone successfully do it on the first try. Get upside down. Yeah. They, yeah, they just don't fall out. They throw all their weight to the side, uh -huh. and then then they're like, "I'm still in the boat." Yeah, you know, whereas that doesn't happen in any other IK. Yeah. Any other yeah. IK, you like you throw your weight to the side, and then you're swimming. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I want to hear about China. Do you went to China? So you you have these main China, right? I did. So, so you um, went to the factory there. Yeah. So I I I tried with the U.S. manufacturer. Mm -hmm. That was out of my price range. The other one um, that imported 
blew me off. Yeah. So now I'm stuck with an import. Yeah. Um, which wasn't my first choice. Um, is what it is. Uh, and I had a great experience doing it actually. Yeah. So um, it took me several months to even find someone. You know, like I'm just emailing. You know, like googling and emailing and googling. I was originally. Oh yeah, so difficult. I was originally looking for Korea because you know, like what I've heard is like Korea is They're famously great. Yeah, yeah. There's better stuff. Um, and you know, like just unsuccessful, unsuccessful. I finally got one company to respond and then it's like this long drawn out process. Like I send them the pictures of the boat that I built, send it to them and then they do a CAD drawing and then they like do everything wrong. Yeah. You know, it's just everything was wrong. And, and, you and then I'm like, money to have them do that? Or they no, do no. It? That was the thing is, um, the U S manufacturer, like I had to pay like upfront all for all yeah. like the hours of CAD design and stuff. Yeah. And, and I just couldn't do it. So when I finally found someone that was willing, um, we went back and forth, back and forth, back and mm -hmm. forth. I was like, make me this. And then they send me CAD drawings and they're like this. And I'm like, no, that's all, this is wrong. This is different. Yeah. Like, like the picture, make it like the picture. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so like back and forth, back and forth. And the first company that I, I, it was like two months, like two months long process, mm -hmm. like going back and forth every, you know, like couple of days, yeah. like adjusting stuff and like giving them more information. And, and then after two months, they're like, we can't make that. Like they just didn't, they couldn't, they didn't know how to do it. They didn't have the welding skill to do it. So now I'm like back to square one. And then I find another company. But you had a drawing at least. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had so. pictures of the, the the cardboard creation yeah. that I made. Yeah. So, oh, but they but they made you a drawing as part of that. They they so made like had, a, they sent me CAD images. So you yeah, had yeah. CAD images, which probably helped too. Uh, I don't. I honestly don't remember if okay. I sent the CAD images to the second place. Okay. So then I get to the second place. Um, same process over and over again, and they're like, "Let's do it." So then, no. um, the the original when I made it, I made this boat um, and another one that's a foot shorter. So this is nine foot nine, mm -hmm. um, and I also made one that was eight foot nine, which is the, the current small. Is it nine foot nine, like end to end, tip or to like tip? That's what it's supposed like, to be. Not They're, to fall in the curvature. No, no, no. Like okay. tip to tip. Okay. Um, all the way is, is nine foot nine okay. is the spec, but yeah. there's, you know, like I, I haven't actually like put it in something like I've kind of like eyeballed it with a tape yeah. measure over the top and it's really close. It's, okay. you know, like that, that's basically what it is. The same thing with, um, side to side, you know, it's fit, it's supposed to be a 15 inch compartment, 12 inch tubes, 39 inches overall, mm -hmm. you know, like the Thor might push that out, you know, like yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. an inch or something. So there's like little discrepancies, yeah. but that's what it's supposed to be. Um, I also, when I started, I was thinking about being light and just like doing what was required. The original drop stitch floor was only like five feet long. So basically just what you would sit on. And yeah. then I figured out that it, that because the drop stitch sits, you know, like the top of the drop stitch sits like at water level mm -hmm. so all of that space would fill up with water and it was like super sluggish yeah so then i had to stretch the uh, bottom out and it displaced all of that water yeah. made it better um so back to china um i um i made this boat this is a 12 inch tube boat this is the mm -hmm. production boat um so i made a large and a small and i also did 10 inch tubes um super smart yeah so like i've got a 10 inch you have that now you have a 10 inch boat I've got, yeah, in my garage. Yeah. It's not a production thing. Yeah. Um, and I just really liked the 12 inch tubes better. It's mm -hmm. just so much more stable. It's, it's not, you know, like that obnoxious to paddle around. Yeah. Like I thought it was going to be. The 10 inch tube is smart for kids. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm still experimenting with a kid boat. Like yeah. I'm going to make it smaller. I'm, I'm also working on shrinking this boat down, yeah. um, to make it kind of more of a play boat, like mm -hmm. playing in holes and stuff like that. Um, so I had those four prototypes made and they sent me pictures of them and they were just not even close. Yeah. Like they were just so wrong. Like I, I could show you pictures of it and you would just laugh and I, and I, and they sent them to me and they're like, they're ready. And I, and I was like, that, that doesn't, that's not even close. Like it doesn't even look at all like yeah. the pictures, like what happened? And they're like, Oh, and I don't want to, you know, like they're the only ones that I could even get to respond yeah. to me. So I was like, okay, well, like I need the correct boats, uh -huh. but like I'll buy those too. Yeah. You know, cause I like, so I, you bought the prototypes. I, uh, yeah, yeah. Did you so, ever get them? Oh yeah. 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 Do you have them in the garage somewhere? I've got they're them terrible. Okay. Yeah. They're terrible. Yeah. Like that. I mean, they're basically, I should just, you know, it's kind of like history. It'll fall out sometime. Be like, yeah. Hey, this is a prototype. Yeah. I mean like it, 
th that's all they'd be good for. Yeah. Is like, you know, the, the museum in the future. You could float down the yeah. South Pole going though, right? Oh, I, I could do, I could do, I could do a lot, but yeah. it would be, it would just be dumb. Okay. Like it would just, it, they're just so dumb, okay. you know? And, uh, so I went through this whole process. We got the prototypes and there was stuff with them that were wrong. Um, you know, like just figuring out, um, just little stuff that I wouldn't think, you know, like yeah. uh, you, you say that this needs to be really strong mm -hmm. and it, and it's not really yeah. strong. It's like. It, it's just, you know, like it's not, it's cheap, Yeah. you know? And so I knew that the strap that came with the original prototypes wasn't strong enough. Yeah. So I had it upgraded, which is the strap on the 2017s, which for most people, like no one's ever going to have an issue. But like, if you're an idiot like me and you're, you know, running 30 foot waterfalls mm -hmm. and, and we've, and I've run 30 foot waterfalls and I haven't had any problems with it. But they're they're eventually gonna break, you yeah. know, like if you're really abusive to it. Yeah. Um, and so then I gave them spec, you know, like I said, it has to be six hundred kilogram brake strength, mm -hmm. you know, like that's what it has to be. And then the next day he emailed me, he's like, I can't find it, like I can't. And I said, Well, we can't build any more boats until we find it. Yeah. And then like a week later, he's like, I found it. <laughs> so then it was good. So like now that the straps that are on the 2018s are like bomber, you know, like NRS, yeah, you know, like super strong. I don't always associate NRS with bomber. Just so you know. No, I mean like, the straps. The we'll straps say, are we'll great. Say bomber. Yeah, 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 yeah. The straps are great. It's bomb. You know, they're bomber straps yeah. now. Um, and you know, so like just little stuff like that is just slowly evolving, and I'm like learning different things about. Did you it. go to China? I did. Um, so. When I had the, when I actually went into production, mm -hmm. I ordered 50 boats. Um, I went there before they did. I had a, a I used to drive a truck. That's mm -hmm. what I did um, before I started doing this full time. And I had a customer that makes, um, um, they're like pedal, they're, they're bikes, but they're on water. It's like a cataract. I've heard of it. And uh, I can't remember what the name of the company is. Anyway, so they had tubes and they had told me about, they started, when I told them what I was doing and that I was quitting, they were a regular customer and we were friends. And, um, and you were quitting your regular job to do this. Full time. To take this on. Okay. Right. Um, so the, the tubes that they got were just like, you know, like straight basic cat tubes, mm -hmm. you know, like they're just flat water. Yeah. They don't care. Okay. Um, and the company that there's these, these big patches that go on the top that hold the boat um, that hold the frame of the bike onto the, the tubes, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. And and the, the tubes were like, the patch was supposed to be here and they put it on mm -hmm. sideways. So like, they were all garbage. Yeah. Like they just couldn't even use them at all. And they tell me this and I'm like, I had already had the experience that they made completely the wrong boat. And I was like, if they make 50 of those, like that's the end of my dream. Yeah. You know, like it's just over at that I've point. I've heard this before. When you go, or stuff I'm trying to, You'll get a bunch of things, and there's one thing that's wrong. That's a fatal flaw, and it, and it, it ruins the whole. Me yeah, so yeah, it ruins business. the whole product. Yeah. So I was like, I need to go there. So I went there. I met the company. I met the the owner of the company. That's cool. Um, and it's you know like it's a small company, including the um, what I don't know what you call them, the cat engineers, mm -hmm. um, the owner of the company, the wife works there. Mm -hmm. um, there's there was like eighteen people. You know, so it's small. It's not like this giant, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really surprising to me that it was like everything that I experienced was exactly the same as here. Mm -hmm. You know, like he took me out to dinner every night that we were there yeah. and paid for everything. And he's like collecting his receipts because he yeah. has to write it off on his taxes. Yeah. You know, like it's it's just all the same. And, and I, I tried to get as much information on, uh, you know, like how much the people make yeah, and like what is how, how he treats his employees and you know, yeah. like everyone seemed happy, like no one was, and uh, and I asked him like what the minimum wage was and he just like laughed at me. <laughs> and he's like, he's like that if I paid minimum wage, like no one would work here. Yeah. You know, like they don't just like wrangle people up off the street yeah. and like force them to work in a factory. You know, like they, they pay and it's the same. Like they have to keep raising the pay until people want to do that yeah. job. And, and he's like, no one wants to work in a factory anymore. Like people want to do computer work, Yeah. you know, like, so that's what everyone's trying to get into. So he struggles like trying to find people that want to build boats. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it was just, 
like I thought it was pretty cool, like learning that. I w- that sounds fascinating to me. Yeah, I would love to go to China totally and see fascinating. Factories. I would yeah. be so into. It. I have nothing to build, but if I did, <laughs> I would I would go over there as a kind of a vacation. Yeah, just to like see what China's like and maybe, see how. Maybe come with me in uh, I would. August. I, are you going in August? Yeah, like yeah. like end of, August. end of August September. Go then, but I would love it's, to. It's it, it's it's a trip, just per, as a personal trip. Just like yeah, yeah. I would personally be interested to see how our everything we use is made. Like this jacket's made in China, like everything we have is made in China. Just right. to see the process, like you went through, would be really interesting. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I I after that, I was, you know, like, I I wasn't as um, uh, bummed out that yeah. it wasn't being made in the U.S. Yeah. Because it was like, it's not, like, it was not what I thought. And you, know, you like had that. a relationship with them. Yeah. Like, and you they had, like, were, met a person. Exactly. There, you, you know, like, to them exactly. And, so, like, the owner's, like, a cool dude. And we, mm-hmm. you know, like, we chat and email. And um, his, um, like, right-hand woman mm-hmm. um, is, uh, she does, like, a lot of the um, designs. Mm-hmm. And uh, we talk back and forth and stuff. Helped her with her uh, English homework. Yeah. Um, and I got it like all wrong. Like <laughs> just the, the, the phrase, it was like clear that someone that English wasn't their first language was the yeah. one that was like doing the curriculum. Oh, yeah. And I was like, that's no one, <laughs> no one talks like that. Yeah. Like they don't say that, yeah, like yeah. that might be the right answer, but that's not the right answer. And, uh, you know, so, and, and we had this relationship and, and, um, I went to look for like a paddle manufacturer oh. over there and they're like, Oh, we know where that is. So oh. we, uh, the girl and I drove to the paddle manufacturer and, you know, like we looked at the paddles and we went over, you know, like a bunch of different stuff wow. and didn't end up, um, doing it. I didn't, I didn't like the, um, yeah. the product that they were putting out, you know, like, so I was, I was concerned about it and I'm like, ah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to move on from this. That's really yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, but we're going to be here all day talking about this. Um, I want to ask about the, the rocker. I don't know if you know, like I designed a boat kind of like this for Sotar that we use for our Chetco trips uh-huh. that has no rocker. And I, I love what you did. I love having all that volume in the bow. I love having it be really wide. I think it's really smart. Uh-huh. I think like, I like the design, but this is way more rocker than I would want. And I'm kind of torn. Like, I'm not sure if I like it or not yet. I honestly don't know. Mm-hmm. So like, give me the pitch. Why do I want this much rocker? So... You know, kind of goes back to the uh, the creature craft thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's no boat that handles bigger water than creature crafts. Is this for big volume water? Uh, that, big water, like the big volume. So, so that size? was that was my um, that was my intent is to make, and you know, like I'm not I'm not trying to run crazy big water. Yeah. You know, like, but I want to run crazy big water for something this small. Yeah. Does that make sense? Sure, like, like so. You, so river, like creeks, at high volume, or even even big rivers, like it. So one of the things that I discovered um, while doing this and trying mm-hmm. to sell them to people is like one, everyone is like no one wants to buy a boat that they haven't paddled, mm-hmm. and like my client base is all over the country. Yeah, you know, and and I got really lucky. I actually sold like fifteen boats. I uh, pr- like pre-sold them before they even got in the country, wow. and people like saw it and saw Based like the little photos stuff. from china they just no no like no because i had the two prototypes where okay. i was running stuff and okay. before the production run was done yeah so people like saw me doing stuff and like recognized rivers that i was on and they're like that's awesome like that's big water yeah you know like iks don't do that kind of stuff so do you think so i want to get back like the do you think the rocker is good for big volume absolutely but is it also good for drops it's great for drops is there a disadvantage to the rocker <clears throat> um, other than wind wind's the obvious one right yeah so I was super worried about wind yeah super worried about wind we were just um, we were just up on the South Fork Smith mm-hmm. we were in the Stevens Bridge section um, we, we put on There's a lot of flat water there too we put on um, and with like I don't even know that we had gotten underneath the bridge mm-hmm. you put up river of the bridge yeah um, I don't even think we got underneath the bridge and it just started hailing and it like, and the, it was like constantly changing. It was like hail, then uh, sleet, and then, you know, like, and then it snowed mm-hmm. and the wind was just like all up river. It was just in our faces the whole time. Like we were, we were just like leaning down forward and like paddling like this. And then you'd like, look, and then you just keep going and just, you know, like we did that for two or three minutes and like, we started talking to each other like maybe we should just go back yeah. and 
we didn't have any harder time than anyone else that was there. You know, like cataracts, like people rowing, yeah. like paddle cats and stuff. And there was kayakers there. And like we were keeping up with the group. Cool. You know, like nothing was, it, it wasn't as big of an issue that I thought it was going to be. But still, it's definitely it's got to be more a little bit. It's, it, there, it's more. So what I'm trying to wrap my brain around. So the, the boat that I designed right. is no rocker. Almost right. none. Like, is this better? Is it better than I can know? It, like, is there any disadvantage to the rocker? Like, why wouldn't I want this? So some people, um, some people are concerned about visibility. Like being able what, to see what's being, oh, being, yeah, able, yeah, yeah. To, being okay. able to see over the edge. Um, I feel, and I'm very confident telling anyone, and I've yeah. sold this boat to friends, and you know, um, that any disadvantage that you lose from not having that precise control mm -hmm. on exactly where you're going, you gain way more yeah. from the stability. That was that was a concern of mine actually when I first started paddling it, and I paddled these a bunch now. Uh -huh. You're totally right. Yeah, I totally agree with that. So um, the other thing I say I think about there, performance is there a disadvantage to performance? Like, is there a time you wish you had less rocker? Uh, I, I've never been in that situation. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I mean like the other thing about, about this boat is like, it looks huge when you mm -hmm. see pictures of it, it just looks enormous. Mm -hmm. Um, so I had a uh, customer that, that had bought, uh, a different inflatable kayak mm -hmm. the previous, uh, previous season. And he's like, I keep falling out like just constantly. And, uh, so he bought a couple of my boats and I said, Hey man, like, can you throw your other kayak on top of it? And it's like almost the same, like almost exact same width. What kayak? Exact the exact same. It, it was a NRS bandit okay. or a NRS outlaw. Sorry. Okay. Um, so like almost like when, like the tip of the boat, you know, but it's like, it looks, the tip is like this. I, agree. I think it looks big because most, most of the kayaks are pointy at the end. Right. I think, <clears throat> excuse me. I think it's a huge mistake. I think they copied canoes once mm -hmm. and nobody thought to fix it. Yeah. They're just like, we kayak was pointy. <clears throat> and, they, and like hard shell kayaks innovated. They weren't always like long dancer kayaks. They eventually got shorter and nobody ever did that with inflatable kayaks. Mm -hmm. or, I mean, a few people have, but I think that that's a problem. Long pointy inflatable kayaks or mm -hmm. flippy. There's no advantage to the point. And so I love all the volume. Yeah. The bow and the strand. I think right. that's a smart, so, smart innovation. So, you know, like most... Any other inflatable kayak, because of the point, mm -hmm. um, when you go off a drop, yeah. it's it's going straight. And you still, like, the whole boat has to get off of that drop because yeah. all of the water that's pushing it down is going straight. So if you get into anything where there's a lateral going in a different direction at the bottom, totally right. you dive right into it, and then you just flip this. over. Just yeah, like a meter, or, every or time. this is my thought, too. You If you don't flip, you hit it, but there's just one, there's, like, a pivot, a pivot some way you don't expect. Right. Where like a when a bow is like really blunt like this, it hits the wave and it's predictable what it's gonna do, right? It's not gonna like it's consistent. It's it like consistent. It, it, it does yeah. the same thing. Like you hit that lateral and you you kind of surf off to over the side. Or something. You don't hit it and then turn. Right. I think a lot of the flips come from pointy boats that hit a big wave or a hole, hit it, then turn and then flip. Right. It's just like when they when it dives in, it's just collecting too much of that yeah. water. You know, like it's it's got I'm with you. To I'm slide. totally. I am totally so, with you on everything. I just I, the rocker it's so much rocker that's so where, much rocker that's where I'm like there's gotta so be a downside of the rocker. it's double height so yeah. like the, the top of the tube yeah. is two feet that's where I'm still wrapping my brain around it like is there a disadvantage yeah. of the rocker and I can't kind I was of like who makes more? who makes any big water boat that doesn't have big rocker like every big water boat yeah, has yeah. big rocker for big but then, stuff right but then you get it but it's a kayak yeah. you know but see I, like I ran the Cal Salmon at 4.7 and like Every time I do this, everyone thinks I'm crazy. Like yeah. Cal Salmon at, at four foot seven, and it was big. It was the it was probably the biggest, hardest, like volume class yeah. five that I've run. And yeah. like I ran Cascade clean, I ran Freight Train clean. Yeah. Um, I, I flipped on airplane turn. Yeah. Um, but uh, I you know like it's, it's yeah. just a big waterfall. It's like nine foot waterfall. It wouldn't be fun to swim though. No, I mean, so, none of the, none of that's it was actually thing. it was actually fine to swim, but yeah. like it could have been bad. Like yeah. I could have got worked in the curtain. Yeah. Um, but you know, like it <laughs> because it doesn't come to a point. There's no like diminishing. You know, yeah. like so like the all other other kayaks they start diminishing like like a foot off of center, yep. and they start getting smaller and smaller, and there's just no volume. The like, other part, we're just gonna rail on those other kayaks for a minute. <laughs> the other point is when you do an overnight trip, and it's diminishing. 
you have to put the weight on the ends, you can't do that. Right. You know, you have to have volume in the bow and the stern so, if you want overnight gear. So that was the one of the things that I said we're still learning. We, we did this trip on uh, Illinois last August mm -hmm. um, at 100 CFS, which is a quarter of the recommended minimum IK flow. It's stupidly low. It's so low. Yeah. Like, you're so low. And I mean, you can say 100 CFS for pretty much any river. And that's yeah, it's just low. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, like, the idea was that we were going to take as much as we possibly could. Mm -hmm. We're like, let's see what this can do. You know, like, so we took the thwarts out all together and we used um, uh, five cubic foot bilge bags, like mm -hmm. the biggest gear bags you can get. Yeah. And we used that as the backrest. And, you know, like, we just tied it all down. Uh, me and my buddy Aaron carried coolers with us. Mm -hmm. So he had the most stuff. Um, uh, but I'm like the biggest heaviest person um so we both had coolers we both had five cubic foot gear bags full of stuff mm -hmm. um and like saws and you know like little hand saws yeah and like just just stuff yeah, like yeah stoves yeah. and he brought his 65 pound dog that like <laughs> stood on top of the gear bag the whole trip like the pictures that are up on on I've my facebook page yeah, yeah. is like this like he's going through a rapid and like the dogs just standing like right behind him on the boat. Yeah. So like high messed up center of gravity and like, but we had all the gear down low yeah. and just like so much stuff, like just so much stuff was in the boats. You know, like we didn't, we didn't have to go backpack light. Like we yeah. didn't, we didn't all share. The same thing, there's ATV bus that we use on the check yo. We can put twice as much weight than I thought we could. Right. Because the volume in the bow, it has a lot of volume overall and the bow and the stern volume makes a huge difference. Right. Well, we gotta close this up because we're just chatting. <laughs> and I don't think YouTube even allows us to put videos up this long. Yeah, no one's gonna watch this we long. Can, no one's getting to yeah, the end. <laughs> we, can, we can just stay and chat when we're done. But um, yeah, we should probably just close this up, and we, maybe we'll do another episode another time with more Sweet. stuff. But um, I just want to say I paddled one. I paddled one like five or six times, a handful of times. Today we went and paddled, and I dig it. It's a cool boat. Sweet. Thank you for doing it. I mean, I really also admire that you like went after it. Like we all sit around the campfire and we're like, we're going to make a better boat or we're going to make a better fire pan. We all talk about doing these things and to like do it and follow through and like work with a different designer to go to China. That's like a really admirable thing. And to have shipments of these and take that chance is super cool. Thanks, that's really man. impressive. So um, thanks for doing that. Sweet. It's really cool. And um, if people want to learn more about your boats, where should they go? Should they go to your website, YouTube channel? So I've got a, <clears throat> I've got a, I've got a website, croneninflatables.com. I've got a YouTube channel, croneninflatables.com, and I've got a <laughs> Facebook page and a uh, um, Instagram that I still kind of haven't figured out yeah, yet. Okay. Like, I'm not too tech savvy. It's there, but, you know, like, if you don't want to be bombarded by stuff, go to the Instagram because I'll put something <laughs> up, like, once every yeah. other month, you know. Well, I'd say for boaters out there who are, like, getting into boating or you've been there for a long time, I, I just feel like you can be doing this for a long time and, like, like learning about it's pretty helpful. So anybody out there, please like take a minute, go to the website, learn about it, and at least be educated. They're pretty cool boats, and I'm sure people. I'm seeing them all the time now. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It went from like not existing to all over the place, everywhere. So, yeah. Everywhere. It's really cool to see. So Sweet. anyway, thanks for joining me in the gear awesome. garage. Thank you so much for having again. me. Yeah, we'll go boating again here pretty soon. And um, yeah, if you guys have questions, comments, you can like I said, go to his thing, but go to my YouTube channel and add comments. Subscribe to me if you want to. You should. You don't have to, but you should. Um, yeah, see you next time. Thanks. Thanks, man. The other side of the screen does something else. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, technology is badass. Um, I, yeah. I mean, I, I, have I use technology shit. for stuff a lot, but I, for how much I use it, I, I really suck at it. You're getting cool. good, though. You're doing right. it. That's all that matters. Dude, we're, 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 play, I'm, we're playing, so all we got to do is not fuck this up. We're not doing a second take, so if we fuck up, we have to deal with it. Power through. I fucked up. I did too. <laughs> All right, so you're live already. Uh, I really like putting my feet up. Can I put my feet up? Does it show my soles? Uh, just <laughs> yeah, you can put your feet up. I've, just get comfy. I've done that before, and I've looked bad when my soles are showing the camera. <laughs>